What's up guys? So, yeah, a little different from our normal thing, but one of the people I follow called Spectre um, recently posted he was tagged in what is the Pokemon Generations tag, which I'll explain a little bit in a moment. But it seemed like a really fun thing for us to just kind of throw out there at you guys for a little something extra. And we're um, all for making more videos and, and doing different th stuff. Yeah. And it's not going to interfere with our normal Let's Play schedule, so we figured, why not? Let's yeah. do the thing. I figured we'd just toss this up on, like, a Tuesday or something. Yeah, or something. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know when we'll be finished with this. Um, <laughs> we're actually kind of going to do two versions of it, which I'll explain in a second. But what the Pokemon Generations tag basically is, is um, you list your favorite Pokemon from each generation, and then just talk about things that you want to see in an upcoming generation, since... Sun and Moon was recently announced. Um, yeah, Gen 7. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, um, so it was started by Faint Attacks, I believe. Mm, yes. Um, and af after you do the thing, you tag three people. Normal tag video kind of deal. Um, so yeah, we're going to tell you our favorite Pokemans, and then we're going to tell you why. Now, and then we're going to force you to do the same. Well, we're or, not, you know, not. If you want. Unless we tag you, in which case you're screwed. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, like I said, we're going to do two versions because when we were looking at this, we're like, well, it would be way too easy to just pick legendaries. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do the non-legendary version, which is this version, which you can probably tell by the title. Right. I hope. Um... <laughs> Who knows? Uh, and then I will make we're going sure. to do... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we are going to do a second version. That'll be Legendaries and yeah. Mythicals. Yeah, that's specifically Legendaries and Mythicals. So, um, without so, yeah. further ado... Strap we start in, with, Pokemans. Yep, we start with Gen 1. So... Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Transition! <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So, my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon is Ninetales, and it's mostly straight nostalgia. Um, the first- I- first of all, I love foxes. I didn't even know about all the Kitsune lore and stuff, uh, when I was first getting into Pokemon because I was, like, eight years old. Um, <laughs> or some- something around that area. Um, but I was like, yo, it's a fox with a bunch of tails and it spits fire and it's awesome, and then... I got into collecting the cards, and my first card was a Vulpix, and then I, um, I was at, like, a card-gathering thing. I don't know what you would call it, because um, it was just kind of hosted in a hotel. Some sort of event. Yeah, some sort of card-collecting convention thing, essentially. <laughs> um, and this guy had a, a binder with a bunch of cards in it, and he had, like, just a straight page and a half of holographic nine tails. <laughs> <laughs> and like I, I hadn't gotten a holographic it's like they card yet. They weren't actually yet. very uh, rare or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, and I like hadn't actually gotten a holographic yet. And I was like, oh my god, it would go with my Vulpix. It'd be so cool. So I went and grabbed like the what I felt was like the best card that I had that I could trade, uh, which was a Machoke. <laughs> <laughs> and um. And I, like, I ran over to him, I'm like, will you trade me one of your nine tails for my Machoke? And, like, keep in mind, I'm, like, eight years old, and this guy is, like, clearly a teenager. Mm -hmm. and, and at the time, I thought this was how it normally worked. Um, <laughs> now I realize he was just being really nice to me because I was an adorable kid. Um, and he didn't have he, to be, because he was a teenager. He could have been an ass! He, he, yeah, he, he looked at it. He's got, like, a crowd of people around him, just fascinated with his collection. <laughs> and he looks, and he's like, Well, I guess Machoke is pretty good. Sure, I'll <laughs> trade you. And it made me, like, the happiest person. Later on, I got, like, a Japanese Blaine's Nine Tails, and I have, like, all these cool Nine Tails cards. So, yeah, Nine Tails is, like, my OG, kind of. <laughs> my favorite Pokemon from first gen. Magikarp. <laughs> um, I, I love the lore. Uh, most of what I'm going to be going for is lore and design, and I love, like, the story of the Magikarp, you know, the and that it's from an old legend of, you know, a fish going up a waterfall until it became a dragon. So I love magic. I love the Magikarp Gyarados line, and I, I gotta give mad props to Magikarp. <laughs> and also, come on, Splash, it doesn't seem to do anything. 
<laughs> Plus, uh, I got to play a Besom game where I had this totally OP six-year-old little girl character with the best OP Magikarp, who, of course, evolved into Gyarados as soon as the, uh, the uh, game got to the correct dramatic point, um, because all of my points went into that Magikarp. <laughs> it had Super Splash. It did! Which was yeah. actually Hydro Power. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was a really fun game, and no matter what, Magikarp was always going to be high on my list, but it just pushed it to, you know, the, the best. So, all of the Magikarping. Alright, so, <laughs> Gen 2... This was a hard choice for me, because Gen 2 is my favorite generation. Those were my favorite games to play. Um, but ultimately, I have to go with Wubbuffet, because he's just, he's so silly, Such and he's literally a punching bag, and he, he literally only learns four moves. That He has one moveset, but he, he can put in so much work at the same time, and it's awesome. And, and the female ones wear lipstick now, yeah. and it's adorable, and just, wah, my <laughs> That's basically why. Uh, for my favorite from Gen 2, I'm going to have to go with Quilava. Um, I, I really like fire types. Uh, usually I go with the fire starter. My, my first um, Gen I played in was, uh, was Gen 4. I got a late start in Pokemon. <laughs> Mind you, he's older than I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I got a late start in Pokemans. I was at the end of high school when I started. So, um, you know, my first, uh, my first starter was, uh, the Infernate, Monferno line, all that shit. You know, fighting fire monkeys. <clears throat> so, I like fire types. I, I think they're pretty beast. Um, and I love the design on Quilava. It's just a really adorable little fire ferret thing. It, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got like a fire mohawk. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, for Gen three, Gen three had a lot of my favorite Pokemon in general. Um, so this is also hard to choose. <laughs> uh, but I have to go with what is probably my overall favorite Pokemon ever, which is Sableye. So beast. And <laughs> there's a number of reasons for it. Um, one is when I when I'm portrayed in, like, animations or art and stuff, I'm actually usually this, like, sort of wispy light being with gemstone eyes. Mm -hmm. And so Sableye is kind of, like, the anti-mini version of me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's adorable, and also its typing is badass. It did not have a weakness until fairy type was introduced. Mm. And fairy type was introduced to counteract <laughs> dragons. So Dragons, who already had weaknesses. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Um, and there were at just... least two uh, dark ghost types by that point, yeah. between so... Sableye and Spirit too. <laughs> but, I mean, Sableye, like, as soon as I saw the design for Sableye, I was just like, Ah! Oh, you are adorable! <laughs> what typing are you? Even better! <laughs> um, and that, that kind of, like, he's always just kind of stuck out to me since then. So, uh, I love his Mega Evolution. I, I actually run Mega Sableye on my normal team. <laughs> Um, He's adorable. Yeah. <laughs> he was happy when he actually took down my save line. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It took most of my team, but I did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did not win that battle, but I beat down the save line. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, save line. Uh, he's, he's my guy. All right. Uh, my favorite Gen 3 Pokemon is Gardevoir. Um, I just, I really like the aesthetic of the Ralts, Kirlia, Gardevoir line, and then Gallade is awesome too, though that's a Gen 4 Pokemon. Um, yeah, uh, you know, just the... I really like the ethereal psychic thing going on with Gardevoir, and then they added the fairy typing, and suddenly Gardevoir is super duper beast. And <laughs> <laughs> Gardevoirs are scary. <laughs> it's so much fun, and oh my god, they just break all of the shit, and it's glorious. So, <laughs> Gardevoir, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for Gen Four, I have I feel like I have the stupidest reasons for my favorites, but <laughs> Gen Four, my favorite is Buizel, and part of the reason is my first real exposure to Buizel because I actually never played Gen Four. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the generation where I started, she didn't play. Yeah, 
<laughs> but my, uh, I did watch the Diamond and Pearl anime for quite a while. So my first exposure to Buizel was the one that Dawn caught, <laughs> which was this like total badass, but still also adorable because it's a freaking Buizel. Um, and I just I fell in love with it. I I just I just I loved him. I yeah. loved that Buizel, and Buizel's always stuck out to me since. Buizel are awesome. My favorite's Lucario. Just flat out, Lucario might be my favorite Pokemon of all time. Um, I, I'm i a big fan of fighting type Pokemon, even though there's very few on on my list of favorite Pokemon that are fighting type. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but I love fighting type. I love the uh, the concept behind it. Um, and and just Lucario, I love the aesthetic. I love the, uh, the jackal look. And yeah. It's pretty much about looks and just, yeah, it's about aesthetic for me. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, also the aura concept, I love that. Yeah, aesthetic and lore. Um, I love, I, yeah, it really suits in with how I, how I look at the world, how I see things, and it is a lot of fun. That is a really stupid explanation. That's fine. <laughs> Most of my explanations are stupid too. I like ma I have a better explanation for magic art. <laughs> it's okay. Most of my explanations are stupid too. Okay. Um, so Gen Five. <laughs> my favorite's got to be Chandelure. It's <laughs> ah okay. So I had a Chandelure on my team in black, and first of all, my black team is probably the most well-balanced team I've ever built. Um, but that Chandelure puts in work. That thing is fierce. <laughs> um, it, it's like, is it is it a water type? Good. Throw Chandelure at it. <laughs> as long as it's not water type, it'll be okay. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it's I love the design. I'm kind of a slut for chandeliers. Um, <laughs> especially, like, fancy gothic-looking chandeliers. Mm. I... If if I could make all the light fixtures in my living space gothic chandeliers, they would be. <laughs> so, um, you know, you start you start out with this little candle, and then and then you get this gothic chandelier, and it's it's a fire ghost. And yes, please. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, <laughs> my favorite Gen Five is uh, probably Scraggy. Now Gen Five was a hard one for me to pick because um, my black game I only have three gym badges. I kind of got bored. <laughs> um, but I really love, uh, I love, Scraggy is just a really charismatic Pokemon for me. It's just those pants, those pants dropping. Oh my god, and it has to keep pulling up its pants. It's so adorable. I cannot get over those goddamn pants. And it's a fighting type, which I love fighting types. So, you know, it's a fighting type that drops its pants, and that's just, that's my jam. It's a fighting dark type, which is even better. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, alright, so we're at Gen 6 now, and, um, my favorite from Gen 6 has to be Halucha. Um, it's kind of a weird choice for me because it's not necessarily, like, either any of my favorite typings or anything, but I just, the design, okay, you also have to understand I'm half Mexican. <laughs> I know I don't look like it, but I am. Um, so to have like this this luchador bird just like show up and it's a total bad, and it, it's actually like a pretty good Pokemon. I was just like, oh yes. Okay, thanks. Bye. Yeah, I will take that. Um, so yeah, Halucha's just awesome. A flying fighting type. Like I, I never would have expected that we would get that typing, but I'm really glad we did. It's really cool. Alright, uh, my favorite for Gen 6 is Aegislash. Uh, it is Mind Control Excalibur. <laughs> like, what the fuck even is that? But it's just a Pokemon that's a sword with the shield on it, and it's, it's really cool. I love the idea. Again, it's the aesthetic. Um, so yeah, Aegislash, hands down. And I just realized yeah. that, um, there's six generations. You can have six Pokemon in our party. We could have we could have a party of our favorite yeah. Pokemon. So, but you could never evolve your Magikarp. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we should just we should do a battle. We like should our totally do that. From <laughs> <laughs> that. That should be a thing we do. Sometimes. So that would be anyway. Nine Tails, Wobbuffet, Sableye, <laughs> Buizel, Chandelure, and uh, <clears throat> Halucha 
against that's, that's almost a balanced team. It's almost <laughs> against Magikarp, Quilava, Gardevoir, Lucario, Scraggy, and Ag Aegislash. So many fighting types. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's gonna real help really help you against my uh, two ghost types there. Yeah, um, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so we might have to do that. Um, don't know how we're gonna record that because we don't have a we don't have card a for, well, for that, but um, yeah. but we could totally build those teams and in the future. Yeah, we we could find a way to make that happen. Yeah. Um, anyway, anyway. <laughs> so the last bit is things we want to see in upcoming generation, and. I desperately want to be able to just equip movesets. Like, I love that TMs don't break now. That's really, really nice. But, okay, I just... I understand how you could only have four moves in the game, and it was, you know, space lim was limited. That's important. We don't need those limitations anymore. Like, and I get you can only have four moves equipped to your Pokémon. That makes sense to me, too. I just want to be able to go to the Pokemon Center and equip a different move set, and then go out and do things. Like, if if it was just like the idea was that the uh, Pokemon League limits your move set down to four to make battles, you know, more balanced or whatever, and you know, it, it's it's wrong to have your Pokemon with more than four moves. I would love that, and then you could have like your your evil team that you're fighting, like you know Team Rocket or or Galactic or whatever you're fighting that time. They could have like six moves equipped or something, so they're cheating, and that would be a really <laughs> really cool event. Like you know you're 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 being a reasonable, good, responsible trainer, and you've only got four moves equipped on your Pokemon, and you've got your your HMM whore over here, but you know they can be useful when you get to the Elite Four. <laughs> Uh, or 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 in a gym battle or anything, uh, but you know you've you've got to go to the center and change it up. And I would really really like if they did something like yeah. that. And because... and kind of related to that, um, I actually want to see. I kind of I I want to get rid of HMs as essentially permanent moves, like you, because the difference with HMs and TMs originally was. Uh, HMs were, were permanent, and the HM thing never broke, because you would always need those moves to right. progress through the game. And, and yes, um, we know Move Deleter is a thing, yeah. and Move Read Learner is a thing. Yeah. I just want to streamline the process. Yeah, but the thing is, so you stream. know, TMs were, like, originally a one-use thing, right. so you had to, like, think carefully about how you wanted to use it, mm -hmm. but... TMs are multi-use now, mm -hmm. and so are HMs. Why right. don't we just make them all TMs? Mm -hmm. Uh... And that way you can just, like, you know, give someone cut for a while while you need to get through the route, and then once you're done with that route, you can re-equip Grass Knot or whatever. Right. Like, <laughs> I say that because also, someone, someone hurt me very bad with yeah, Grass Knot Pokemon. Also, it needs more Grass Knot. Um, grass Knot is badass move, I love it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I just, I, I think that HMs functioning the way they do now is kind of unnecessary, that we should be able to, like reteach over those moves if we can't just rearrange our move sets anyway. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is megas. There are a few megas that I I really want to see. I don't know if they're gonna add more megas in the next gen or what, but I yeah. mean, far fetched. I really want a mega <laughs> far fetched because I think it's hilarious how th this Pokemon it, it's it's not very useful. But I, I love the idea that if you love it enough, and if you have enough of a connection <laughs> with your Farfetch'd, it can become a badass. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love I love your explanation. You basically want it to have the uh, <laughs> the Magikarp principle. Yeah, pretty much. If you spend Except some time on your Magikarp, which isn't even that much time, it's only level 20, yeah. um, you will evolve it into a badass. Yeah, but the glorious. thing is, like, it doesn't even stay a badass all the time. It's right. just like, it's, it's just only, only a badass sometimes. when it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> only a um, badass with you. Yeah, and like... Another one I would want to see a mega of, uh, Rapidash. Just <laughs> flaming yes. alicorn. Absolutely. Why is this not a thing yet? <laughs> um, just, yeah, there's just, you know, there's a few Pokemon, and it's mostly, like, Pokemon that kind of aren't very popular, aren't very used, mm -hmm. that, like, I just kind of want to, like, bring them back into the limelight a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um... Mega Wobbuffet would be hilarious. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, such a tank. Oh my god, what does that even like? You, like? you thought Wobbuffets were a problem before. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, that leads us to 
uh, we want to see evolutions of every type. It's it's kind of gotten to the point where there's really no excuse yeah. anymore. <laughs> You're, you're you're coming up with new types and creating evolutions of them, and that's awesome. Uh, you know, Sylveon is so cool and so much fun and adorable and super badass because it has to have maximum happiness and friendship. I know. And, and stuff. When, when they introduced uh, Dark type, <laughs> that you know they introduced Umbreon, mm -hmm. um, but. They didn't introduce a steel type evolution. Yeah. Um, I personally really want a ghost type evolution and a dragon type evolution. Like, um, yeah. like we've all seen people's hypothetical evolution arts. And yeah, they're some everywhere. of them are really cool. And I just I want to see those for real. Yeah. <laughs> it's there there's so much that you can do with it and your your choice evolution is Oh yeah, I would totally want a fighting evolution. Yeah. Especially if it's because fighting type is my favorite type, as ghost type is hers. Yeah. Um I have an advantage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so even even as I love fighting types, but I want more quadrupedal fighting types because I love quadrupeds as well. I know, I'm a little <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> And I would and just it, love to see what they would do with a fighting type yeah, Eevee. Yeah, and it, it would be interesting to see, like, how they would design a fighting type Eevee. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Um, we're also, considering that the, the next, next games are Sun and Moon, I'm personally really curious to see how much of a factor, like, day and night cycle is going to be, because... I'm assuming we're going to have a day and night cycle <laughs> with the name well, Sun and Moon. We haven't not um, had it for a while. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, but I just want to see, like, how much of a significance that's going to be. If we're going to get more Pokemon that evolve by day and night and and stuff like that, like uh, Umbreon and Espeon did. Right. Um, even though I said those in the opposite order. Which <laughs> 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 You but, know. Yeah, you, you know. know what I'm talking about. You specifically, um, Joe. I know you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't even know what oh, Joe. Yeah. I just know Joe knows. Joe definitely knows. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> but, yeah, like, we want to see if they add any new mechanics that, that correlate with the day and night cycle and... Just, Probably, like, different places yeah. that you can only get to in the day and the night, and hopefully not, like, plot yeah, develop, like, plot, you know, hinging, because, you know, some of us have jobs and things, yeah. and we can't play Pokemon 24 hours a day, Yeah, even but if we like, sometimes do. Even, like, in, there there was, like, the uh, the Tide thing in Shoal Cave. Mm. It is, uh, is something that, like, they could definitely bring back. They could, like... There's a tide you, thing? Oh, yeah. You've never done that? <laughs> no. Yeah, if you go into the Shoal Cave at different times of the day, there, Wait, uh, there's game? a high tide and a low tide. I don't tide. remember where Shoal Cave Just, is. Just, uh, like... it's, it's third gen, so you can go in there okay. and Omega will be Alpha Sapphire okay. and do that. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm gonna go play I, I on Pokemon Shoal. a little bit more than he does. Um, <laughs> I, I did admit that I only have three gen patches in gen 5. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like, you know... They can incorporate that in, like, beach areas so that, like, certain areas are available at, like, high tide and low tide, and there's just so much you can rad. do with the premise of day and night mm -hmm. uh, that I'm really curious to see, yeah. like, how far they're going to take that, what they're going to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if that's supposed to be their theme. Yeah. Be nice. So, um, that's, that's basically it for, right. uh... For this uh, one... We have some lore things we want to see about, but we'll talk about that in the Legendary yeah, video. Yeah, because that's so. probably going to re relate more to Legendaries. Right. So, yeah, we will see you again in the Legendary and Mythicals version of this video. Uh, Tally-ho, Team yeah, Splendid. Until, until then, Tally-ho, Team the Splendid. Microphone. <laughs> the microphone. The microphone. <laughs> But it's like talking to a wall of bricks. It makes me <laughs> sick. It makes me sick. And I keep trying to tell the microphone. It doesn't seem to know that it's owned. It doesn't know it's owned. It doesn't know. Should we just put that at the end of the video? That's a They Might Be Giant song. <laughs> Okay, but that doesn't answer my question. Should we just put it at the end of the video? I'm okay with that. <laughs> Alright. So guess what? 
we forgot to tag people in our tag video. Yep. Oops. <laughs> so, about right for us. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Digi Valentine, Colin Fusco, and Zax Brebeck, I choose you. Do the tags. Or don't. I don't really. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, can't, can't actually enforce we, it. We can't really force you to, but it would be really cool if you did. Yeah. Um, anyway, with that said, uh, we will also be releasing the Legendaries version. And uh, until then, tally-ho, Team Splendid. Tally-ho.